So part of our Westwood project, uh, it was actually a change, but this, this room here, um, we did a significant amount of work uh, in this room and the biggest thing was our lighting. So there was no lighting in here at all. Um, we tried to do recessed cans. If you guys look up at the ceiling, you'll see all these beams up here. Those are actually structural. Um, and if you guys remember back on one of my uh, posts on my feed, I talked about the subfloor in the master bathroom of this project. Well, we replaced it because of the hump on the floor. This is why. Uh, this is totally different framing from what is throughout the rest of the house. But going back to what I was getting at is since this is structural, we actually have inch and, a, uh, three, quarter, inch and three quarter subfloor on top of this and this plaster is adhered directly to it. So we couldn't get wires to chase all the way over to where our recess lights would be. Um, we had a couple options here. We could lower the ceiling enough to get recessed lighting in there or let's do some up lighting. So Mackenzie and Co chose these awesome light fixtures that we ended up putting as wall sconces. Uh, you can see we actually have two of them off right now out of the six because the room is bright. Um, we also installed a fixture above the, what looks like a ping pong table, but actually is a billiards table with a ping pong top to it. Um, and if you guys are paying attention, those chains are chained up a little higher than they should be because in a game of ping pong, it became an interference, um, which is pretty funny. Uh, beyond that, we painted this whole room a bright white to, to lighten up the space. And then behind me here, or in front of me here, um, I actually brought in Wood Theory Design and he built this incredible um, mantle. Uh, this is all reclaimed lumber. He brought it to his shop. He used, I believe he used a giant bandsaw to cut this sweep uh, and beat him up um, with some hand tools. And then he used this organic based or plant based um, uh, finish to actually stain it to match those structural beams up on the ceiling that I was just discussing. So this, this was an ugly piece of millwork before. Now this fits the space. Uh, the final piece of the puzzle is going to be getting rid of this faux finish on this concrete. Uh, we're gonna install a, um, a soapstone and we'll oil it so it's a nice deep black, uh, which will really complement uh, not only the woodwork, but the white walls as well. Uh, and finally, um, we have these built-in, or these existing built-ins. These were all oak. So we spent a significant amount of time, or I should say Big Dog, Graham and his team, uh, spent a significant amount of time grain filling this stuff with a fine paint of Europe, um, putty base, grain filler. Um, two coats, and then some high build primer, lots of sanding, lots of prep work, maybe a little bit of Bondo here and there. Um, and got these things silky smooth. We replaced the shelves um, and added MDF back panels to help help with the process. Uh, and all we're waiting on is for McKenzie and Co to supply us with some new door hardware, uh, something to complement the existing brass hinges. And these things will be a wrap. Um, the color, I believe, and this I can't believe the name escapes me right now, but it is, I believe, a, um, a slate blue or something of the like but I'll make sure I get that and add that to the link below. So guys, thank you for tuning in to this episode. Um, we are going to get this place wrapped up. We're gonna get this place decorated, um, get this game room, man cave, whatever you wanna call it, living room, uh, totally furnished out. I know there's a bunch of furniture on order, so when that's all said and done, we'll do another recap of this room, but we're already 10 times better than it was uh, and a heck of a lot brighter. So thanks for tuning in.